Hey folks, welcome back to My Kitten Reads and welcome to my September wrap up. I read 13 books, mostly books actually, um, in September. That's a lot. I also DNF'd a few, um, only one of which I'll talk about because the other ones were uh, Mansfield Park very variations that made me kind of want to throw things so um i'm not even i haven't even put them in good reason i'm just like yeah no they don't exist but yeah so 13 books um to start off with and which is not part of the 13 is i'm going to talk about brothers ruin by emma newman this is one of the tour.com novellas and i was really looking forward to it so the fact that i dnf'd it at page 70 I'm quite disappointed in. Um, I was really looking forward to it because A, I've loved most of the Torn.com novellas that I've read. Um, I've never read Emma Newman before, but I listened to her podcast, Tea and Jeppy, and really love it. So I was really looking forward to reading her work because I've heard lots of great things about her work. Um, it's a novella which is quite short and it is sort of period England with fantasy and magic with a female protagonist, which hits all of my buttons, but I couldn't get into it. Um, yeah, so I've had to DNF it, and I hate the fact that I've DNF'd it, but the character was not connecting with me, and there was this feeling of dread right from the very first page, which is probably the point of the story, but was just not working for me. I was not enjoying reading it, and I was literally, I spent most of September avoiding picking it up which for a novella, for a novella is, means it's not working for me. So I have DNF'd Brothers Ruin by Emma Newman and I'm really disappointed about that. It was a really hard thing to do but I just can't have it sit there with me avoiding it. So unfortunately that's what happened. So in terms of what I read in September. So I started out by picking up Ed the Empire by Timothy Zahn. And also Dark Force Rising by Timothy Zahn, which is the first two novels in the Air of the Empire trilogy. This was the first of the Star Wars trilogies, first of the Star Wars novels that were published in the early 90s. Um, and then the first ones that I read. Um, and I picked them up again, A, because I love them and I still love them. Um, and B, because I started listening to the Thrawn cast, which is a podcast that does a read along with these, just like Rogue Podron reads along with uh, the X-Wing books. So um, I will be picking up at some point soon Volume 3, which is The Last Command, but I'm trying to clear through all the podcasts that are actually already on my phone first. So sometime, probably this month, I will pick up the third one of those. But that is, yeah couple of my favorite books from my teens and my childhood um so it's set five years after the return of the jedi leah is pregnant with twins and trying to set up a government luke is sort of trying to figure out where he goes next in terms of he knows he's going to teach have to teach his nephew and niece um and he hasn't really had an experience with teaching and there's a new commander of the Empire, a Grand Admiral that no one knows anything about. And he's starting to cause problems for the New Republic. And so, drama ensues. Um, yeah, they're really fun. So I really recommend the Ed of the Empire trilogy. Um, so I read those two books in September. In between those two books, I picked up the first of my Kindle books, which was Uncanny Magazine issue 14. This is the January, February 2017 issue. Um, yeah, yeah, I got really behind on Uncanny Magazine, and so I had to pick that up. But I was really enjoying it. Um, yeah, it's really very good. Um, you know, really good short fiction, really good essays, really good interviews, really good poetry. You know me, I love Uncanny Magazine, I'm a, I'm a space unicorn, um, so that's Len M. Thomas and Michael Damien Thomas, so yeah, uh, that was great to pick up another one of those, and then I, I started the month a bit off, and then I picked, I had a week off, um, in the middle, of, sort of towards the end of the month really, and I picked up this. I picked up Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb, the first in the Farseer trilogy, which is the first of her Robin Hobb novels. Um, 
I've never read Robin Hobb. I've always known the name. Um, and it's been a long time really since I've read much in the way of epic fantasy. So I was really quite nervous about picking it up. But I picked up the trilogy quite cheaply. And I wanted to give it a go. And I had a week off. And I really enjoyed it. Um, so it's the first book and the shortest of the books. And it's about a boy called Fitz who um, is basically a royal bastard. He's the bastard son of a uh, prince of one of the princes of the heir to the throne he's brought to his father's holdings and dumped there when he's five years old and shenanigans ensue because um you know his father actually hasn't had chivalry hasn't had a child with his wife who is barren and so he res resigns from being the heir to the throne and goes into seclusion and Fitz is left to be raised by basically the stable master who was his father's man and it's basically yeah the story of him growing up in not really belonging anywhere at the castle until his grandfather decrees that he'll be educated correctly and that he's going to learn how to be an assassin for the royal family and yeah it's all about his training as an assassin under the current assassin um, and there's politics and adventure and shenanigans and there's some mysterious ships raiding who are causing mysterious things to happen to uh, some of the citizenry. And yeah, so that's the first book. And I've picked up the second one. I've only just started it. But I'm actually really enjoying I think it's a good there. It's a It was a good solid four-star read for me. So, um, whoa, okay, sun's getting in my eyes. But yes, um... Really enjoyed it and, you know, keen to get through the rest of the trilogy. So that was a really good experience. Um, I also picked up, during my time off, Angela Carter's The Bloody Chamber. This collection is a collection of her most, probably her most favourite, famous collection. It's a collection of short stories based around fairy tales, but with um, a much more modern, in some cases, a particularly feminist slant to them they're brutal they're beautifully written but they are brutal um i had previously read the company of wolves which is one of the more famous stories um, which is a take on little red riding hood um i'd read it and written an essay for it for a class last year i really loved it which is why i picked up the uh, actual collection but yeah i devoured this in one evening so i mean it's quite short but yeah, so there are versions of Red Riding Hood, of Bluebeard, Puss in Boots, Beauty and the Beast, and Vampires and Werewolves, and it's just compelling. Even though it's brutal, it's compelling, um, and you just can't put it down. So I thoroughly recommend The Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter. Seriously, if you have any interest in fairy tales at all, pick it up. It's great. Um... The remaining eight books that I read in about a four-day period, yeah, seriously, um, was, were all ebooks, and some of them were new and some of them were rereads, but they were Jane Austen variations. I got quite grumpy in the last week of September and just buried myself in Jane Austen variations, mostly from one author, but not all. Um, so I, there's one particular author, Jan Rowland, who publishes every few months and they're sort of novella, short novel length, um, stories and I absolutely love them. And so it's always good to go and check what else he's published recently. And there happened to be quite a few that I hadn't read. So I read the following eight books on ebook. I'm just going to look at my iPad for this. So I read Chaos Comes to Kent which is one, I believe, where um, it's Pride and Prejudice and but instead of Mr. Collins coming to visit the Bennets, it gets put off and therefore the Bennets go and visit Mr. Collins and it's actually got a really awesome Lady Catherine who's actually quite nice and it's Anderberg who's the problem and, you know, shenanigans and shoot. And then I read, so that was a new one, and then I by Jan Rowland, and another by Jan Rowland was The Angel of Longbourn, um, which is set at the very start of Pride and Prejudice, but Darcy, on his way to visit Bingley, falls from his horse and he has 
uh, typhoid, I think, and Lizzie finds him outside of Longbourn, guarded by his horse. They take him in and they nurse him back to health. And so he gets a very good impression of the Bennets right from the start. So that was the Angel of Longbourn. Then I picked up one by um, Sarah Oskandali, I think is how you pronounce her name. I'm not sure. But this is Revisit Mansfield Park, How Fanny Married Henry. So this is a very rare Mansfield Park variation in which um, Henry uh, makes different decisions and therefore doesn't end up having an affair with Maria, which, you know, endears Fanny to him. And so I really quite enjoyed that. Then I went back to Jan Rowland and I bought The Companion, which is another one set in Kent at Rosings Park. In, in this one, Anderberg's companion suddenly passes away and her temporary companion is now going to be Lizzie and they become friends and Anderberg starts showing independence. And again, shenanigans ensue. That's another Jan Rowland. I also bought as another new Jan Rowland. There was four of them. Oh my God. Um, in from the wilds of Derbyshire, which basically gives Lizzie an aunt and uncle that actually live in Derbyshire, who are somewhat poorer than the Bennets. And it involves Jane marrying Mr. Bingley, then starting to behave weirdly and rejecting Lizzie. So Lizzie's in sort of not a great headspace. And so she goes to visit her aunt and uncle to guide her cousin into coming out into a society. And of course, she encounters Mr. Darcy, who hadn't actually been in Darby, in Hertfordshire with Mr. Bingley. And again, shenanigans and shoot. So those were all the, I think there were five new Jane Austen variations that I read last week. <laughs> last week. And then there were three that I reread. So I reread all by Jan Rowland. I reread A Summer in Brighton, which is where Lizzie is actually friends with Mrs. Forster instead of Lydia. And so Lizzie goes to Brighton. I read An Unlikely Friendship, which I always cackle my way through, which has Caroline Bingley engaged at the start of the book, and therefore she ends up becoming friends with Lizzie and deciding Lizzie is going to be great for Mr. Darcy. So that one was a reread, and I reread Cassandra, which is a book where before Pride and Prejudice ever happened, Mr. Darcy actually met someone he really liked, got married, had a child only for his wife to die. Um, and so when he meets Lizzie for the first time as the sister of Mr. Bingley's new wife, Jane, he's got a daughter and he's in a different headspace. So, um, yeah, so that was, whoa, that is a lot of Jane Austen variations. Um, you can get them all on Kindle. Most of them are by Jan Rowland, um, who I just like the way he writes. Um, and they're my version of Trashy Romance. So I read 13 books in September and I DNF'd, well, probably three, but only one that I'm counting as a DNF. But I am actually very close to reaching my reading goal for the year because my reading goal is 95 books this year and according to Goodreads, I've read 92. I am so close. I'm hopefully going to get a lot more reading done this month because there is a Dewey's Readathon. So there will be a TBR for that coming out in a couple of weeks. Um, but yes, so those were all the books that I read in September. I hope you really enjoyed listening to that babble, particularly given how uh, trashy the end of it was. Um, but yeah, so let me know if you've read any of those books, if you liked them, um, or if you want to know more about any of them, and I will see you again soon. Bye.